As an environment artist, or really any developer within games, you've likely heard the words trim sheets uttered once or twice. Searching this term online is likely going to yield more questions than answers, as you'll be learning different names and uses for what many others online use these images for. Part of the issue with understanding trim sheets is that there's no one consistent application for them, so it can be difficult to find a place to just simply start learning. This point of confusion is also trim sheets' biggest strength. They can be used anywhere for pretty much anything, and depending on the ability of the artist, you may never know they're being used at all. I'm Chunk Trafficander with Flip Normals, and if you are trying to just get your footing with trim sheets, this is the course for you. In this series, we are going to develop a solid foundation for what trim sheets are, why we use trim sheets, and how we can make trim sheets. This series will follow the creation of an environment asset from concept to completion, all with a studio mentality in mind. So hopefully that's whetted your appetite. Let's get into it. What are trim sheets? Well, to be as true to form as possible, they can be anything. Now, that really isn't a satisfying answer, and I don't blame you for thinking that way, but I think it's important for you to hear that first so that we can begin to build towards that understanding. Trim sheets are just images with the intention of being used within a 3D environment. We know that images used in games are often called textures, and that we can use several different types of these textures to make what are called materials. So why do we then call trim sheets something different? Well, that's because their creation and subsequent application in these 3D environments is a little bit different. I first pose to you a problem. Normally, for high priority assets, which are often called hero assets, we will unwrap them to be textured with a unique material that only lines up to that specific asset's UVs. This allows for great customization, but takes a significant amount of time in both unwrapping and ultimately texturing. And we can't even use this awesome material for any of our other assets. If we think about how many assets comprise any game level in current generation games, that's a lot of time spent unwrapping and texturing. And while environment pieces are incredibly important to games as a whole, the amount of time and screen real estate that these assets take up is minuscule in comparison to these hero assets. So unique materials aren't as much of a priority. As well, in these environments, we can usually find very similar looking assets, as it's not too far off to suggest that they may have been built using the same resources from an in-world perspective. It is here that the idea of trim sheets comes into play. Trim sheets are images, like I've said before. However, I like to think of them as a list of materials. Like when building a wall in the real world, we need to know the resources that we would be using in its creation. Let's look at this wall here. Initially, it's going to be a brick wall. That's easy, I can make a brick material, no problem. But now, I realize that I need to create supports for these pieces and I'm going to have to make them out of some kind of stone. But instead of wasting resources on creating an entirely new material, I can just allocate some space on my bricks with really no issue. But then I remember that this is actually an apartment building, and I need windows too. Again, I can't really justify an entirely new material for just a window texture, and so onto my bricks it goes. As I continue to compile a list of materials onto my image, what I've really been doing, whether I know it or not, has been creating a trim sheet designed for apartment building wall assets. The best part of this trim sheet? I can use it on anything, and even make some tweaks to update and create quick variations to these assets on the fly. Now I'm able to quickly texture my thousands of environment assets, while also maintaining some visual cohesion across these assets because I'm drawing from the same resources. Another positive side effect is that we greatly reduce the number of images we need to load a level, even as low as loading only one trim sheet material for an environment. Where materials may be centered around specific surface properties such as brick, rock, glass, and so on, 
We can think of trim sheets as being centered around various use cases for these materials, such as apartment building, country barn, or Egyptian architecture. There are endless ways to construct these trim sheets, each with endless possible uses. It's going to be up to us to determine what our end goals are for these resources, which will directly determine how we go about creating them.